Hello YouTube and welcome back to the Loose Transistor channel. I'm your host Lucas and we're here in the Loose Transistor cave on my computer room for us to talk a little bit more about Betaflight 3.2 and the RC3, RC4, RC5, all that good stuff. So the last time we did a vlog, I talked to you guys about how I was having problems with RC4 and my setup, uh, my Doberman with the bi blades here was just not flying. I could not get it to fly. Anytime I went above 50% throttle, the whole quad would just shake and it, it would never reach full power. I wasn't able to tune it, everything I tried, nothing would work. So I spent the last week or so basically talking to the developers back and forth, trying to figure out what was going on with the, this RC4 thing, doing all sorts of different tests, trying different configurations, different quads, everything we could think of to try and figure out what was going on. So that led me to this video here, which I figured I'm gonna discuss with you guys. First of all, what, what happened and how we found a solution to the problem, at least on my quad, and how you guys can find a solution for your quad as well if you're running by blades. And then I'm gonna give you guys a short little guide on how to get Betaflight 3.2, uh, the proper configurator installed on your computer, how to flash 3.2 uh, RC5 on your flight controller. And I'm gonna give you guys a brief little tour of the new 3.2 uh, configurator so you guys can get an idea of all the new cool things that Betaflight has been doing. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about here is uh, what happened with this quad and how we got a solution to it. So what ended up happening is after trying a bunch of different configurations on RC4, turning off filters, turning on filters, and all sorts of PID values, nothing would work. So what I ended up doing was uh, flashing the latest RC5. That came out a, a few days ago, and I flashed the latest RC5 using the latest 3.2.2 configurator, not the 3.2.1, that's important and uh, I flashed it and when I went to maiden it, it, it flew, it was better. I was able to reach full throttle. However, once you got past 50% throttle, the quad was still warble a little bit and you can hear it on the prop noise. So then I started tuning and I was actually able to tune the quad and get it to fly incredibly well. I'm, I'm very, very, very happy with it. I will put a little uh, video here for you guys to take a look and, and just have an idea of how it's flying. Um, so after tuning it, uh, uh, what I did basically was, first of all, I enabled PT1 I enabled the dynamic filters, I disabled notch 1 and 2 for this quad, and then I dropped my D gains to about 15. So a lot of the oscillations that I was getting in this quad, a lot of the problem was coming from the D term. So I dropped D gain to about 15, and then I started pumping up P. So I ended up with the values of about 52 uh, P gain, uh, 60 on I, and then 20 on D. So D turned out very low on uh, on this tune. And from what I've been been reading around the internet there is that D gain, or the D term, on the latest speed of flight, especially the RC4, RC5, is a bit more aggressive. So you need a lot less D term to get your quad to feel smooth and fly smoothly. So it's just something to keep in mind if you decide to flash RC5 or the latest 3.2.2, sorry, 3.2 beta flight, is that you might not need as much D gain and that might be causing a problem. So try to drop that if you're having any issues like the one I described. So yeah, the quad is flying great. I'm very happy with it and I'm very happy to be able to continue using the bi-blades that I was using and not have all these problems. Um, another factor in the solution that is very important to note is the fact that I was using the latest uh, configurator, not the one that's available through the Chrome store, the one that is available directly from their GitHub, because I think that there's some differences on the stock settings on it or something like that, and uh, it is important that you flash and configure the latest beta flight using the latest configurator. That is important. That's something that I actually mentioned when I first try, tried uh, beta flight 3.2 and the BL Heli 32 and I forgot about it. So that's on me for sure. Maybe there wasn't even a bug at all. It could have just been the fact that I was flashing and configuring it on an older uh, configurator. So that's my bad. But um, yeah, we've got it figured out. We got it sorted and we got it flying great. So now that we've covered all that stuff, let's talk about Betaflight 3.2 and let me show you guys how to get everything installed properly on your computer and on your flight controller. Also, I do apologize if you can hear intermittent uh, fire alarm. They're doing fire alarm testing on the building today, which is super fun, yay! So uh, yeah, anyway, let's keep going here and, and talk about Betaflight 3.2. So what I have here is a brand new Betaflight, or sorry, CL Racing F4, and we're just gonna flash this and walk through some configuration just as it sits here. I'm not gonna bother pulling a quad or anything like that. So we're just gonna do it that way. All right, guys, so the first step on uh, actually getting Betaflight 3.2.2 configurator installed is that to actually remove your original configurator. As you can see here, mine already says 3.2.2, but let's pretend for a second that it says 3.2.1. So you go to your Chrome extensions tab here, and uh, all you're really going to do 
is uh, delete the existing uh, beta flight that you have there, the beta flight configurator. Leave all the other stuff, that's fine. Um, let's just delete that for a quick second here. Anyway, so you've de we've deleted and removed the stock, uh, the, the configurator that comes from the Chrome store. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the Betaflight Configurator GitHub, and I'm gonna have links in the description for you guys so you don't have to hunt down, you can just click and go there. So we're here at the Betaflight Configurator page, the GitHub page, and this is where they're storing all the good code base and all the awesome stuff that makes the configurator work. So you're gonna wanna go to this clone or download button right here, and you just wanna download a zip of that. So this is basically grabbing the latest master branch, the latest working code that they have for the configurator. So we're just going to open that real quick and I'm just going to drag it to my desktop here because uh, I'm not that organized and I don't really care. So here it is. So it's dragged to my desktop, just extra extracted somewhere that you know where it is, basically. Now, this part's pretty simple. All we got to do is uh, we're here under extensions and you're literally just going to, oh, sorry, one more thing before we, we do that. You must make sure that this right here on the top corner is selected. So that's developer mode. That is going to allow you to install um, apps that are not coming directly from the Chrome store. So be careful with this for sure, but for this case, it's safe, I promise you, no problem. So enable developer mode, and then you're gonna grab the, this is the beta flight that we just extracted. We're gonna grab that, and we're literally just gonna drag and drop it right here. It's gonna say drop to install. You let it go, boom, it is here. Beta flight configurator 3.2.2, it is enabled, and it is installed. So we're just gonna leave it there for now. That is perfectly good to go. We don't have to worry about that. Cool. So, here we go. Now we should see the new Betaflight configurator pop up on your computer, just like uh, as if it was installed through the through the App Store. Oops. So we're just gonna go ahead and open that up. So here we are, latest Betaflight 3.2.2 configurator. It doesn't look any different from the rest right now, and that's fine. We'll show the differences to you guys once we get inside. So, to flash things, this is how the process is gonna work. So first of all, of course, you're gonna connect your flight controller to the USB. And we see that the COM8 popped up. So I'm gonna connect there, and I'm gonna go to the CLI. And because, let's see here version. This is running 3.1.7. So because it's running 3.1.7, we wanna get into DFU mode by just going DFU. Now, if you are running an, uh, a newer version of Betaflight for whatever reason, you're gonna want the command that is BL. That stands for bootloader. And it's essentially the same thing. It puts your board into DFU mode. So we go DFU. And... Nope, didn't work. So we're gonna do it again. Sometimes it takes a couple of tries. It's annoying like that. So I'm just basically plugging and plugging back in. We're gonna connect again. We're gonna try DFU one more time. There we go. So now we got the board in DFU mode. We can see it right there at the top corner. It says DFU. So we're gonna go to a firmware flasher. We're gonna pick our board, which in this case is the CL Racing F4, which I just passed. There it is. You have to make sure you show unstable releases. This is going to show you all the release candidates of Betaflight 3.2 that are not quite stable yet. Oh. Well, looks like I, uh, I led you guys astray. There, It's not showing up. All right, cool. So let's not fret. Leave that as it is. Now we're going to go to the Betaflight uh, releases page. And I will have links in the description as well so you guys can go to the releases. So here we are. Pre-release Betaflight 3.2, 2.2.0 RC5. That's what we want. So we are going to go down here and we're going to find the hex for our board, which in this case is CL Racing F4. So I grab that. Let me just see where that is. Okay, so I already had one downloaded here, so no problem. I'm just going to delete this other stuff. So here we have just the hex for the Betaflight 3.2 RC5. So what are we going to do? Uh, ignore that. And we're going to make sure that we click full chip erase, we definitely want a full chip erase. So we're gonna load firmware locally, and we have this stuff here on downloads, here it is, Betaflight 3.2, CL Racing F4, hex, let me say open. Now that it's loaded up, we should be able to flash. Let's just give it a minute here and see what happens. Okay, so we got programming successful, I just saw the lights on my board here flashing a little bit, so what I'm gonna do now is unplug it, and plug it back in. Now we're gonna see it show up as uh, COM8 again at the top here, and now we're gonna connect. So, so here we are with the 
with the board connected, ready to go. As you can see here, I'm flipping it around, everything's happening. And uh, on a first glance, the Betaflight 3.2 configurator looks very much the same as it always has. It still has things mostly in the same places. So let's just do a quick tour here of uh, Betaflight 3.2. We do have RC5 installed now and we're good to go. And as I'm going through here, I'm gonna talk to you guys about how I do my configuration and then you can do it your own way or take it from it what you want. So first, of course, we have ports. This is where you're gonna set up your serial RX for your radio and any other telemetry and anything like that that you have. In my case, I would be setting serial RX to UART1, which is where it receives the S bus. You save that and we connect again. So in configuration, here's where we, things get a little bit different from what we've all been used to before. So we still have the, the mixer right here for quad and you can select all sorts of different uh, configurations of motors to use but we also have this guy right here motor direction is reversed so if you are one of those guys who likes to run props out it's super easy to do now you reverse your prop direction in BL heli and then you just literally tap that little button right there and boom you don't have to go into the CLI and say motor yaw reverse whatever minus one this that does not matter don't need to you can just click right there and you have all the props out benefits that you came looking for uh, we still have the system configuration here, pretty normal stuff. If you can enable 32 kilohertz if your board can take it. Uh, accelerometer, barometer, magnometers, all right here. And we can change your orientation of the FC right here. We even have some, uh, some defaults right here that you can just pick, which is pretty damn nice. So these are just niceties, uh, quality of life type thing that just makes your pilot's life easier when you're trying to set up all this stuff. Uh, receiver right down here we have the you can set the serial base blah, 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 blah. in my case I'm gonna set it to S bus RSSI stuff we have uh, all of the features are right here so we can turn on dynamic filter anti-gravity and air mode and in my case I'm gonna turn off OSD because that's the stuff that I'm using but if you're using telemetry or LED strip or anything like that you can turn it on all through here and right here we have all the gyros sorry all the buzzer stuff which is great because uh, I like to turn them all off and I could probably do it faster on the CLI, but still it's kind of cool because then you can you can pick and choose what you want directly on the interface. So this takes away a lot of the guesswork and trying to read documentation to figure out what the commands are on the CLI. So that covers it for the configuration in terms of what's really new here. Uh, this tab here, power and battery, this is a new thing too. So this is where all your voltage scaling and uh, all that stuff is gonna be. This is also where it's probably, you're, you're gonna configure any sort of uh, ESC telemetry, I believe. The fail safe tab is still pretty much the same with the two stages. You can configure what you want each channel to do. Uh, there are some changes to the PID tab, which is sort of interesting. First of all, the defaults for the the deset point weight and deset point transition have changed. And now we have this helpful little bar right here that controls anti-gravity. So anti-gravity for you guys who don't know, it's just a, a system that boosts eye gain during very quick throttle changes so that your quad doesn't bob in there. So you'll notice sometimes you'll take your quad up and uh, you'll punch out and then when you drop the throttle, it kind of like dips or it, it, it moves in a certain way. Anti-gravity fixes that. And you can control the gain and the threshold right here. Typically, I don't touch threshold, I only touch gain. And I usually run with about 2.6, but you have to remember to enable um, anti-gravity as a feature on the configuration tab. Uh, I'll just show you here right, real quick. Uh, right here, we have uh, anti-gravity. So you wanna make sure you enable that. So back to the PID tab where we were at before. So rates, pretty straightforward, stuff that you guys all already know. Uh, there's angle horizon stuff here. If you're using that, you can uh, control the strength and all that. Throttle, uh, middle and throttle expo, as well as your TPA and your TPA breakpoint. It's all right here as you've been used to having. However, things have changed a little bit under the filter settings tab. For example, now we can select PT1 and, or by quad on the deep term low pass filter directly in the interface. So again, you don't need to go to the CLI and type this stuff up and just pick it right there. Uh, your low pass filters for uh, notch and D low term uh, low pass filters are all over here too. And now they have these very helpful little toggles. So when you, before uh, disabling them, you had to set it to zero or whatever. And yeah, it wasn't hard, but it wasn't as clear. Now you can literally just toggle, toggle, and yep, it turns them on and off very, very easily, which is awesome. Not much change on the receiver tab as far as I can see, everything's still pretty much the same. Uh, modes, we will have some new stuff. Uh, for example, camera control, 
because now you're able to, if you do it, the wiring properly, you can actually change your uh, your uh, HS1177 settings directly through Betaflight, uh, through the OSD, which is pretty cool. Might be worth setting up OSD just for that, honestly, especially since you can have OSD on a switch. I might start using OSD again to make use of those types of features. Adjustments tab is not something I ever really use, uh, at least not for me. Servos, same thing. Motors tab, nothing really changed here, still the same. Uh, sensors, essentially the same, logging and black box. Now black box has a nice little uh, setup now for SD card and everything else, and it works a little bit better in my opinion, but uh, other than that, really not much has changed. All right guys, so that pretty much covers it in terms of uh, what I wanted to talk about in terms of Betaflight and flashing it and utilizing the correct configurator. Uh, to flash RC5 and to make sure that things are working. So basically as a general rule of thumb when dealing with the bleeding edge stuff like beta flight release candidates or nightlies or anything like that sort where it's really cutting edge you want to make sure that you're using the configurator from the master branch of their github not the one from the, from the chrome store okay so that that is important uh, they do make changes to those and they do uh, they do go, they do uh, mesh together. So it's important that you're using the right configurator with the right software. Uh, so now that we talked about that, I want to talk a little bit about um, my sort of tuning guide for RC5 uh, as far as it goes now. So let me just grab a quad here. We'll talk, first of all, this might get a little bit long. So if you guys are not into tuning and that sort of discussion, awesome. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. But uh, if you want to sit around and uh, discuss a little bit of tuning, I'm going to talk about that right now. Uh, for a few minutes here. So anyway, here we have a quad. So first of all, I'm going to describe a couple of uh, uh, behaviors that you notice on a quad either on video or through sound that give you indications as to where there might be a tuning problem. So the first one and the most common one that people talk about is prop wash. And uh, prop wash is, is very simply whenever there is a very extreme change in direction or the quad is stopping very quickly, the motors kind of vibrate really quick and you hear that boom, and you see that on the video too. You can see the video just like shake a little bit. So that's prop wash. So that's one of the effects that people talk about all the time, which is a kind of oscillation. Then we have slow oscillations where it's the quad is kind of just going like this. And then we have fast oscillations where the quad is kind of just shaking like that. Usually that's typically to do with P gain. Sometimes it can be D gain. Uh, there's a few different things that affect it, but those are the effects. So you'll see it on your video as shaking. We also have uh, another effect called bounce back, which is when you when your quad makes a full 360 turn like that and it stops, a bounce back is when your video goes boom boom. So your camera goes up and down just a little bit at that very last second. It doesn't just stop, it goes boom boom every time. And you can get that on either axis. It's a little bounce back. So uh, usually you clean that up with a little bit of D and a little bit of, of, of uh, or by increasing P gain sometimes, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. I'm just trying to describe what the effects are and how you see them. That was a bounce back. Uh, another effect that is common to try and tune out is the nod. Now the nod is basically like when you're flying your quad and you do a punch out and then you drop the throttle and the quad sags down or maybe when you punch the throttle, it raises up like that. So that's a nod. It's changing its pitch or orientation based on throttle input or lack of input and that's not a desired command. So basically the whole point of tuning a quad is to get it to the point where the only movements that the quad is doing are commanded by you and not by some other effect or a combination of effects that is changing the way that the quad behaves. So that's the whole point of tuning. The, the locked in thing that people talk about, oh, this quad's super locked in, it's, it, it's describing the feeling of a quad that responds to you and not to its own environmental factors. So. Now that we have that in mind, these effects and so on, uh, I'm gonna walk you guys through how I tuned uh, RC5 on this quad. So the first flight that I took with it, as I said, as soon as you were over 50% throttle, everything started to, to warble through. So the first thing that I did, honestly, was to enable PT1, enable dynamic notch filters all at once, and disable notch one and two, and then I just did a very slow fly around. Very slow, nothing too crazy, and I noticed that the quad did feel pretty good. Uh, it still had that warbling at higher throttles, but it felt fine, the motors weren't heating up, and uh, I was like, okay, it's getting a little bit better. Uh, in my experience, dynamic filter and 
removing notch one and two has been very beneficial. However, I'm talking about very new builds with really good motors. So I know that they're not, they don't have bad bearings or anything like that. They're, they're providing minimal vibration and my stacks are all soft mounted guys, all of them. So if you don't soft mount your stuff, you might not be able to get away with turning off uh, notch filters or using PT1 or so on. So you have to be careful. But if you do soft mount your stuff and you're using good quality motors, you're probably gonna get away with that no problem. So we put you on and then dynamic filters enabled uh, and not just off and the quad flying okay. That's when I started to play with the gains. So this is all a stock tune. So the first thing that I did was drop D gain down to 10. And uh, in that case, I was expecting to get more uh, vibrations usually, but I didn't, I actually got less because I suspect that a lot of the, of the problems that I was having in terms of warbling was being caused by the D gain. And that's what gets me back to that point about D gain being a little bit stronger on uh, 3.2 as of late. At least I have noticed it and some other people have noticed it as well. So once I was happy with the gain being a little bit lower and it actually made the quad fly a little bit better, I started to play with P gains. So all I do is uh, start cranking up P gains like by 10. So if it started at 40, I'll go to 50, and then next fight I'll go to 60, and then 70 until the quad starts to behave weirdly. You're gonna know that you're gonna try to take off and the quad's gonna go like this, or like you're gonna do a full roll and when you stop, the quad's gonna do a quick, fast, almost like a one, two, three, like That's when you know you've reached the upper limit of your P gain and you're starting to enter into the fast oscillation realm, which is not what you want at all. And sometimes you can clean that up with just D gain, but I prefer to back off P gain a little bit. So when I get to that point where the quad is a little bit getting jittery and nervous, you can literally feel that. That's when I back it up uh, maybe five points on the P gain. And that's when I start bringing up uh, D gain just so slightly. I gain is very much personal preference and wind conditions. So that's gonna change a little bit depending on how you like to fly. Some people like a looser quad, other people like a quad that's very much mechanical. I like a more mechanical quad, so my eye gains tend to be on the, the 60s range and uh, I, use, I use a lot of anti-gravity. So uh, that's really up to you and your wind conditions and how you want your quad to feel. However, there is a minimum eye gain you need for the quad to not just wander around all crazy. So probably no lower than, let's say, 40 or 30. So just be mindful of that. Uh, and lastly, the, the D gain is basically uh, less is more, or at least it was in my case. I'm running 22, sorry, I'm running 20 D gain on both axes, and this thing is flying great. Um, no prop wash as far as I can tell, except for like maybe a little tiny bit on really big drops, but then at that point you're really fighting physics. So I'm pretty happy with how this quad is flying right now um, by just doing those little things. So PT1, dynamic filter, notch one and two off. Uh, I raised P gains, but I definitely dropped D gains. So that was my solution to RC5 so far. If you're having problems with bi blades, most definitely drop your D gain. Um, so a lot of people have had really good luck with uh, Betaflight 3.2 RC5 on tri-blades or anything more than two blades, seems to be no problem. As I said, we still haven't really gotten to the bottom as to why. I suspect that it's something to do with the D-term being a little bit more uh, touchy and a uh, combination of that with me using the wrong configurator when I flashed and I tried to tune my quad. So now the Doberman's flying fantastic. I'm super happy with it and it's actually becoming one of my favorite frames to fly because it's, it's super light and maneuvers extremely well and um, yeah, I'm just really loving it. So you can look out to a video fairly soon on just a Doberman. I'm going to talk about it, talk about the Swift as well because I'm actually really enjoying this camera too. All right guys, so that pretty much covers it for our mini guide on Betaflight 3.2, how to get it flashed, how to get it all working. Uh, I hope that was helpful to some of you guys and I hope it helps uh, you become unstuck if you are having trouble tuning the latest RC4 or RC5. I definitely recommend you go with RC5 by the way, it's flying great. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions, comments or concerns or something wasn't clear, drop me a comment on the video below or come find me on the fpvchat.slack.com. I'm always happy to help you guys out, try to sort any sort of hardware or software issue related to quads. That's what I love to do. I just want to help out the community as much as I can. So uh, yeah, definitely come find me. Uh, yeah guys, that's all I got. So if uh, you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do because there's awesome content coming up. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.